Hello and thanks again for joining us. In our last episode, we took our basic Hello World app and we added props in state so that we could type some text into this input and have it update the page. Today we're not going to change what our app does, but we are going to change how it does it. In particular, we're going to make some changes to how we handle the application state. Currently, we are managing the state right here in the component, and you could continue to write components this way such that each one manages its own bits of state. However, there is a much better way to manage your state, and that is called Redux. With Redux, you use a single JavaScript object that represents your entire application state. When a user action is committed, we submit a Redux action which causes the state to be updated and then the page is updated uh, with those changes. So before we uh, get coding, we're going to have to install a couple of new packages. And those packages are Redux and React Redux. Now with those installed, the first thing that I want to do is extract my application state into what's called a reducer. Now you can think of a reducer as a place to define your application state and also define what transformations are possible to the application state. The first thing that I'm going to do here is import the map class from Immutable. Now I'm going to talk briefly about this. One of the key principles of Redux is peer functions and immutability. And what that means for us is that we don't actually modify the application state object when we dispatch an, ac an action. What we really do is compute a completely new application state uh, that is a function of the current state and the action uh, that was dispatched. What map is, is a wrapper around a JavaScript object that makes that object immutable. And so this class helps to enforce those principles. So let's go ahead and define our default application state using the map, which takes a JavaScript object literal. And for us, we're just going to have a name of universe. And we also have to create a store. And what a store is, is it, it's a function that defines how to transform your state based on an action type. So for all our purposes here, this is going to be really simple. We'll just have a simple switch statement uh, that, that, does, uh, that checks the action type. And if we get name updated, then we're going to merge our state by overriding the name with the name that's supplied to the action. Now we're going to have to pull this in to our name.js. And we're also going to need a function called create store that's re, uh, supplied by Redux. And that's going to wire up our reducer uh, to Redux itself. So we use that by defining a variable called store, which is the result of calling the create store function on our reducer. Additionally, we're going to need to supply this store in through our components. And the way that we do that is with a React Redux component called provider. So let's import it. And we'll have to render it down at the bottom where we were previously just rendering the app. Now instead of that, we're going to render the app inside a provider component that contains the store property. Now before I make any more changes to what's going on here, I want to extract the app component into its own file. And that's partly for cleanliness, but it's also because I want to add some stuff to it um, and uh, keep it isolated and make it uh, allow it to serve as a demonstration uh, for how we use Redux to map our state to our properties. So of course I'm going to need React and I'm going to need something else from React which you may remember from the previous videos called prop types. Since we don't manage our own state in this component anymore we can make this a property. 
So I'm going to switch back to using name just to be consistent. So I have the name property, which is a string, and let's make it required. And we also, in this case, are going to require another property called dispatch. This is something that Redux will provide by itself. And this is a function, which we'll also require. And this is what allows us to dispatch Redux actions. Now, we're also going to make some changes to the handle change event handler. Because we no longer manage our own state, we now dispatch actions. So we'll do this.props.dispatch, and the action type is name updated, and the new name value is e.target.value. And you'll recall that we were using the message property off of the state object. This is now this.props.name. We also need to add some logic to connect the application state to these properties. This is done with a function that is usually called uh, map state to props. And for our purposes, we are just going to return a JavaScript object with our name property because it's all we need. And this just gets name from the application state. Finally, what we'll be exporting will be a result of connecting the uh, app component with the map state to props function that we just defined. Now, this connect function comes from Redux, so we'll need to import it here. And we also need to remember to import our hello component, which we no longer need over here in main.js. but we will need to import our app. And you'll recall that it's called app container now, but I can go ahead and rename it right here. It has to be renamed either here or down below. And it doesn't really matter which. Now everything should be in place. If I save all my files, my app should work exactly as it did before. And that concludes today's lesson of introducing Redux in order to manage application state.